All right, so let's um, let's start then. So case one, uh, you're a foundation year two doctor in the emergency department. Oh. Thomas Hutchinson um, is the patient. He's a 70 year old man who was referred by his GP with a cough. He's had it for one week um, and his GP sent him for an X-ray. He was then referred to the emergency department, which is where you are. You will find the X-ray film and the MUSE chart in the cubicle. So MUSE stands for Modified Early Warning Score Chart which is used in the UK. And it's just a list of, um, just a way of monitoring all the um, vital signs. Um, and then um, each vital sign, according to what the result is, is given a score out of three. Um, so three being the worst, zero being, you know, completely normal. So if the respiratory rate is uh, uh, 10, for example, then that's just fine, that's normal. That will just give a score, uh, a, a, that would score zero. And then you um, add the results together. If it's uh, the total is over five, then that's a critical situation. If it's three or four, then you need to address that. That's kind of that's why they call it the early warning score because often, you know, they they're what give you the uh, the first signs that something's about to happen or something has happened. Um, so that's they they really like the, uh, the 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 observation chart. They they focus on that a lot because um, it's kind of the bread, bread and butter of of being on the wards as a junior doctor. Um, yeah, and then you've got the exo film there. So just be aware when you're going through your consultation, whoever's going to uh, do the next one, just that you've there's a cubicle there, you've got the x-ray film, okay, and you've got uh, the muse chart. And um, so just ask me at that point what it says, and I will let you know. So I'm both the patient and the examiner for this one. Mm -hmm. Um, so what you've been asked to do is assess, just assess the patient and discuss management of the patient. So just the standard structure, but, you know, do be aware that this is um, in A&E. Right, so if we could get uh, one person to volunteer. Again, we're, we're not expecting this to be a perfect history. Um, I often encourage people to um, not prepare, <laughs> uh, just to get, get to the hang of of approaching a station without having prepared for that specific station um, because I think it's useful to um, practice um, to practice practicing under pressure um, and thinking on your feet so because that's what the exam will be so we'll, we want to simulate 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 the exam as much as possible um, what we'll also do is we'll set up a, a timer as well and um, so we are trying as best we can to adhere the timers um, it makes a difference when you use it with a timer because your whole approach is changing whereas if you um practice without using a timer then you'll just start developing really bad habits uh, and so it'll be much more difficult to get out of them but if you start from the beginning um using the timer then um, hopefully then um you'll improve very quickly so the suggestion here is to do 20 seconds of introduction up to four and a half minutes for the history and then towards the end the eight minutes for the management and they've used different color codes just so that you can see it quickly and um, which part you should be in um i wouldn't panic you know if you're not if you're still on history and then it turns green then i wouldn't panic too much but you know do try and finish within 30 seconds or so um so yeah who would like to tackle this one well, i would like to yeah okay uh you ready <laughs> Okay, start now, please. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Dr. Sivaram Dad, Junior Dr. Sivaram's department. Uh, yeah. For our records, can you please confirm your name and age for me? Yeah, uh, my name's Thomas Hutchinson. And your age, please? I'm 72 years old. All right, and how would you like me to call you? Um, if you could call me, uh, just Thomas is fine. All right. So Thomas, tell me, how can I help you today? Well, doctor, uh, I've got this um, terrible cough. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. I'm really sorry to hear about that, Thomas. Uh, let me ask some few questions about your cough. So is it all right with you? Yes, yes. <clears throat> right. So, so, Thomas. Can you just explain in your own words about your cough? Oh, it's just this cough. I had it for a week. Mm -hmm. All right. And how did this all start it? Uh, 
I don't know really. I was just kind of yeah, just kind of came on slowly and uh, just getting worse. All right, and did you do anything for that cough? Yeah, oh, I've tried. I've tried a, a few syrups and things, but not really done much to be honest. All right. Um, is it dry or any less? Put them a phlegm comes out. There is phlegm, yes. Yeah, All right. lots of phlegm. Yeah. All right. Any blood? Uh, no blood, no. All right. And other than that, uh, anything, anything in particular that you have with the cough? Well, I mean. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you can tell I'm, I'm you know, uh, in a lot of distress. I've, I've got a lot of, um, uh, I'm breathless and, uh, and my chest is hurting a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can, I can see that. Just to be, just to be clear, here, let me ask you some symptoms which I might rule out just to know about your condition. All right. Okay. So you're this flame, right? So, uh, do you have any color in this flame? Yes, it's a green. All right, and, and have you noticed any, any odor in the phlegm? No, um, not really. No, just regular. And it's uh, all right. Any chest pain? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, and do you feel that your heart is racing, like you know, like bum bum bum? It's going on like that. No, 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 nothing like that. No. Any any breathing difficulties? Breathing difficulties. Yeah, do you have any breathing difficulty while breathing? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some uh, breathing problems. Yeah, right. I'm breathing quite fast. Uh, and by any chance, are you running any temperature? Yes, I am. Yes, so, uh, I feel quite unwell. I do think I've got a temperature, although I haven't measured myself. Uh, do you document it? I'm sorry. Uh, do you document the fever? Uh, no, I haven't documented. I have not measured myself, no. All right. Uh, and just to be sure, like, uh, do you get any, any pain in your legs? Uh, no pain in my legs, no. Any, any, all right. And any nausea or vomiting? No, no. And by any chance, have you, like, felt like you've lost a sensation to smell or taste? Uh, no, no. No, all, all fine. Right. Mm -hmm. And and tell me, like, uh, do you have any similar episodes in the past? No, I've ne never never been ill like this before. No, never really right. had much of a cough, really. Mm -hmm. And are you taking any medications? Yes, I am. Yes, I, I I'm uh, diabetic, and uh, I've uh, I've got high blood pressure, so I take uh, medications for that. You take medications for what? Sorry. Uh, for diabetes and um, and I've got high blood pressure, so I take medications for both of those. Yeah. Okay. May I know like which medications you are taking for your blood blood pressure? Yeah, I take uh, amlodipine and uh, metformin. All right. And tell me, and then I'm just going to ask you some few questions regarding your, regarding your lifestyle. All right. Right. So, how is your diet? Uh, yeah, my diet's not too bad, actually. I, I try to fit in my fruits and vegetables. Yeah, I'm not too bad. All right. And are you physically active? Um, I mean, I, I'll go to the shop occasionally just to get you know, some cigarettes. Mm -hmm. but, but otherwise, no. All right. And speaking of cigarettes, so you smoke, isn't it? Yes, I do smoke, yeah. All right. Um, so may I know, like, uh, since when you're smoking? Oh gosh, uh, 20 years now, yeah. All right, and uh, man, like how much cigarettes uh, and how much do you smoke? Uh, about a pack, uh, 20 cigarettes, yeah. All right, and and are there any, any other drugs like any recreational drugs? No, 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 nothing like that. No. All right, and and by any chance, have you traveled anywhere? Uh, no, I've not. Right. So, Thomas, uh, have you got given any thoughts as to what's going on with you? I don't know, doctor. Have I got, have I got something serious? I have not. But I think it is because, it's, yeah, I do feel ill. Uh, you think it is a bit serious. So, may I yeah. know, like, if anything is worrying you, that I should, like, uh, get this too? Uh, yeah, 
I mean, possibly lung cancer, I'm thinking. Mm. Uh, because I am, you know, I do smoke. Well, we we can look into it uh, just for that for that matter. And okay. anything out of and is there anything you are expecting out of consultation, which I would like to happily address to you. Um, yeah, doctor, if you could get to the bottom of what the problem is and just make me better, please. Really, All just right. sort out this cough and this breathlessness. Yes, yeah, please. Uh, All right. Uh, thank you for gi for giving me this time, Thomas. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to observe you in the hospital for a couple of hours. And we'll look into it um, regarding your temperature, your blood pressure, your respiratory rate. And further, we're going, I'm going to have a look around the chest. And also, also I'm going to involve a chaperone. And also, like, I'm going to do some scans, a chest X-ray, to know about what's going on. Is it all right with you? Uh, yes, that's fine, doctor. You right. do what you've got to do, doctor. All right. Okay, any reports? Right, so uh, the observation chart, um, so temperature is 39 degrees, respiratory mm -hmm. rate is 26, uh, oxygen saturation is 91% on room air, uh, mm -hmm. blood pressure is 110 over 70, heart rate is 92 beats per minute. Um, uh, chest examination, uh, there are, on occultation, there are bilateral crepitations. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so based upon the observations, like uh, Thomas, I believe you have an uh, infection in your chest. Right. 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 Okay. So what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to admit you for, for a time being. And shall I continue? Yes. Yeah. Right. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to admit you here. And we do, under, I will talk to my seniors and we're going to do some further tests to know what's going on with you specifically. And then uh, we're going to like... Uh, um, give you medications from your blood vessels. Is it okay with you? Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, I suspect uh, if you have it, to uh, stay in hospital because the GP said, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, just uh, stop me and ask me. All right, I'm happy to address to you. Okay, so, thank you, doctor. So, so as I say, that you know, one of your oxygen stats it's called oxygen stats slow. So first of all, we're going to administer oxygen to you. All right. Okay. And then. We're going to like uh, run some investigations, which include some routine bloods and and a culture of your phlegm, which you're saying is coming out, right? Yeah. Mm. And then for your fever, we're going to give you some uh, paracetamol and then also giving some antibiotics for the for the infections you are having. Right, okay. All right. So bless you, short, you are in good hands. I'm going to talk to my seniors. But in case in, in in between this time, if you feel any like uh, any fever or any shortness of breath or any or any blood in your sputum, please inform us or the, or our nurses immediately. All right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I will do. Thank so, you. So yeah, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much, doctor. All right. Thank you. Is that the end? Yes. Great. Right, so we were, we did run a bit over time. So I think the timer ran out just as you were explaining about admitting us, admitting me to the hospital under the medical yes. team. Yeah. Uh, so so we've got to speed up a little bit so that we can fit in. You know, the, the, get your marks. You know, for the antibiotics, get your marks for the supportive treatment that you mentioned, the oxygen and and, uh, and the paracetamol. So yeah, you do in order to get your and and for the safety netting. So you've got to um. Uh, try and uh, guide the consultation um, more towards at the beginning. I think a lot of time was lost in the history. So, yeah, it's it is right. difficult, isn't it? When we've got, you know, like you know, the the checklist that is on the on the Google Drive that I've done. It's it's very comprehensive, and even though it's only two pages long, it's so comprehensive because you just literally can't. You have no time to to, to cover everything, so you have to be really selective over what you choose. And I think you were relatively selective, but we just need to, uh, I think, I think with practice, the kind of hesitation, uh, the ums and the ahs will reduce and that, that will save you a lot of time as well. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was really good. And uh, I thought you, you've improved a lot since, uh, you know, the day before yesterday. Um, so, yeah, um, you, uh, I could tell that you, you're really confident in your, in your knowledge. 
uh, that comes across that you you you, you know you said you you're in good hands and you really believe that you know you know what to do in a scenario like this which is really good um that that comes across well to the patient um the uh the communication skills were good actually yeah they were actually very good and um uh i think generally uh you asked you kind of picked up on the on on the the most of the um key issues in the case because i think what we were talking about uh, the day before yesterday there should always be three or four key issues in every case so as soon as you read the case you think what are the three key issues here that i need to address okay so this is an acute presentation cough could be pneumonia or something um so what are the key things okay does he need to be admitted that might be one uh you know um so so, so that would be my first thing the question is like is this going to be for home-based treatment or is this going to be um, for hospital-based treatment? Uh, is there anything sinister going on? Could this be, uh, you know, a, an exacerbation of a, a, a chronic underlying yes, disease or is it like, yeah, like CFPD, um, could it be something like that or, or or is it just, you know, a chest infection on its own? Yeah, and I, I suppose I suppose then it was just kind of the management. I think the management in this case is really important because it's, you know, getting to the diagnosis is fairly straightforward. You've been given all the investigations. Um, so so getting to the management and discussing what, what you're going to do with the, the supportive treatment and the antibiotics and being admitted, I think they're, they're really important. So definitely um, um, uh, leave a lot of time to, to talk about that towards the end. Yeah. Um, so red flags, which red flags questions did you ask? I, I asked like for the, like, uh, for this one, uh, pulmonary embolism, there is the pain in the, pain in the legs. Then yeah. I asked for, uh, for uh, any cardiac cause, like chest pain. And also like, yeah. uh, so those are like red flags I asked and bleeding from the, and bleeding from uh, like blood in sputum. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that was good. Yeah, I mean, is there anything else, any other red flags that he could have asked about? Do you think, guys? I think I should have asked about anaphylaxis as well, like uh, rashes or any, but that would because that is acute as well. Anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis for for a one week history of cough and and fever. Oh no no not that yes yeah I think it's it, it seems like it's prolonged for quite a long time. It doesn't really seem like it's an allergic reaction. And since he's 70 years, I think I should have asked about uh, the cancer symptoms because he's 70 years old. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of. So weight loss, mm. definitely is worth asking. Even though it's just a, a one-week presentation, there could be something underlying that's caused the, the chest infection. So, you know, he could have a, he could have a, a, a malignancy in the lung and then secondary to that, he's developed an infection. Um, especially when you consider the history of smoking, um, that's yes. something definitely just to, to check off, just to make sure to exclude. Um, definitely COPD exacerbation is one of the differentials to think about as well. So, you know, asking if he's had coughs, coughing problems in the past or something like that. Um, so, TB, yes. did you ask any questions to um, for TB? Uh I did ask fever travel. and I just post put them and uh, yeah. But I should have asked yeah. uh, night sweats and night yes, sweat. I should have yeah. explained, yes. Yeah. But I, I just want to ask one thing, one question. Like uh, uh, this patient comes towards uh, infection, like uh, pneumonia. But still yeah. he has like he has given message of smoking. So in the management, should I focus more on pneumonia or should I also include a smoking cessation in the management? It will take too much time. Yeah, again, it's, it, we've got we've got to focus on the key themes here. This is an acute presentation, um, uh, and it's you know he's got pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So while it's, I think definitely it's important to address the smoking at some point. Um, for you, uh, yeah, you know, in the accident and emergency department, I don't think that's your role in this kind of scenario. I think that's something that when you admit them, the medical team will um, take care of that. Um, your your kind of focus at the moment is stabilizing him, making sure he's got oxygen, making sure he's comfortable, and um, you know admitting him to the hospital where he can get IV antibiotic treatment and fluids and oxygen. They're like the, the, that's the main focus, isn't it? Um, for now. Right. 
Well, uh, I, I, excuse me, can I make a comment? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, I just want to also ask if uh, it would be necessary in this case to rule out, uh, you know, a, a cardiac failure, uh, particularly that, um, you know, you mentioned that uh, there was uh, bilateral Bilateral crepes, yes. Rabies are repetitions and, I don't, and it's an elderly patient. Yes. So uh, I don't know. W will it be relevant in this case? Even, no. even though the patient has one week history of cough and fever, will it be relevant to rule out uh, heart failure here? Yeah, so that was the, my final differential was left ventricular failure, definitely, yeah. I mean, the, the sputum is green, uh, so you would expect it to be more, you know, pinkish, pink frothy sputum. Yes, pinkish frothy sputum. Yes, pinkish frothy. Uh, you know, that's certainly definitely one of the differentials. So it might be worth asking, um, you know, in the sputum, um, that's one way, one thing. And the other thing is in the past medical history, just asking, have you got any, you know, uh, have you been diagnosed with any medical conditions? And then if he says no, you, you can also add, just to show the examiner that you're thinking about what's relevant here and you're thinking about heart failure, that oh, you know, have, you, uh, have you got any heart conditions at all? And that, will, um, that will just check off the heart failure. But yeah, I'd say the main ones are pneumonia, uh, TB, COPD exacerbation, uh, lung cancer and, uh, and uh, heart failure. But you kind of you asked about swelling, I think as well. Where I think, but I think your intention yeah. there was to exclude a, a pulmonary embolism. Yes, yeah, that, yeah. No, no, except the pain for the legs was for pulmonary embolism, whereas the leg swelling was for like a heart failure, edema due to heart failure that causes cough. Right, that's what yeah. I did. I see. So it was you, yeah, you just hitting two birds with one stone. Nice. Mm. Uh, any other but comments, just, anybody? Sorry, I carry on. Like, uh, I had a comment, sorry. Uh, the thing is, uh, as you said, TB is one of the differentials, but TB has a long chronic duration. And do you think like to ask TB if it's like acute duration, acute concept? TB, yeah. yeah, so it's... yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I will, I will say yes. You know? And then uh, you can just rule that out by asking if the patient has a um, night sweat. The, then the same question you would have asked about weight loss would have also contributed to ruling out uh, TB and uh, cancer. Uh, case of cancer, yeah, metastasis to the lungs and all that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. Weight weight loss will uh, that's another one of those that will that will also contribute to TB as well as cancer. Mm. Um, and then the night sweat for cancer and the history of travel mm. uh, and the coughing up of blood, mm. all those kind of things. Um, and the uh, contacts, any any contact, anyone in the home or anyone around him having similar complaints? Yeah. So you mentioned, I just want to get to the investigations. You talked about um, uh, doing routine blood. So, when you're explaining this, um, the, the investigations you want to do, which, when you do the routine bloods, which ones would you mention in the exam, do you think? Because you don't have time to list off all of the routine blood tests. Mm. I would have mentioned like a uh, full blood count, uh, your inflammatory markers, and uh, inflammatory markers, full blood count, and urea. Like, what was the it's like one? Big, urea. Urea. It's for CUR, yeah. Yes, because yeah. CURB score, to look at the CURB score. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, very nice. So, so they're the important ones here. So, full blood count, U and E's. Um, full blood count, by the way, uh, specifically the you know the the white cell count and the and the differential count as well, um, to give you an idea of it, if it's bacterial or viral in, in origin. And then the U and E's for the urea, um, also like signs of dehydration and stuff, and, re and and as a baseline for for renal function. Then inflammatory form. markers. ESR, yeah. ESR, yes. They're the three that I would focus on because you don't have time to explain everything. So um, I think that's nice if you can show, show, that's the way to show the examiner that you're not just repeating the same thing for every station, that you actually understand what's relevant in this case. That will increase your marks, I think. Um, yeah, so special blood test. So you mentioned doing uh, you mentioned doing sputum culture. Did you mention a blood culture and an ABG? No, I just mentioned sputum culture. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is it is ABG required here? Is it required? 
It should be. Yeah. Okay. But since it's an emergency situation, like uh, we don't get time. Uh, if you are like thinking we are really not any, we don't get time to do everything. No, but I would, I would, if you've got time to mention those in the exam. So you know, you, you mentioned full blood count, uh, inflammatory markers, mm. and then you could just say blood cult, you know, other blood such as blood culture and ABG, just to check the oxygen. You can just say just check the oxygen levels in the blood. You don't need to explain in detail what an ABG shows you. Um, or what blood, yeah, blood culture just just to, just to show look for infection in the blood, uh, and then sputum culture and chest X-ray. Yeah, I'd say they're the main ones. Um, if they if it was a dry cough, then you might need to do a lavage bronchial alveolar lavage. Bronchial uh, this lavage. Is, yes. This is a typical presentation of community acquired pneumonia. This isn't an atypical pneumonia. But yeah, I thought you you explained all after the time will be after the time finished but you did explain them all the important key issues in the management as well is there any other comments at all anyone well what i just want to say is uh, if if even if you are sure of what the case is i think it's better to ask as many questions as possible around differentials if you are within time uh, so that you do not miss out on important uh, uh, differentials yeah. So you don't streamline. Them, so you don't streamline just because you think, oh, this is most likely pneumonia. You don't, you know, get yourself too narrow, and you miss marks in other areas. This happens mainly in the eye stations, ophthalmology stations. Can you come again? This happens mostly in the ophthalmology stations because, like, the, the, the symptoms are so much, it's still difficult to make out which diagnosis what in ophthalmology in yeah. eye stations. Yeah. Just one other thing. Um, I was just looking at the patient information notes. Um, he's also it says in the stem that he's got um, uh, he's allergic to metronidazole. I don't think you asked me about allergies, so just remember that. But yeah, otherwise yeah. it's um, really good history. Your your improvement is really quite dramatic, I think, from the last one. Not that the last one was terrible or anything, uh, but yeah, I, I can see that your confidence is growing really quickly. In the like management of this patient, yes. yes. In the management this... of this patient, is it is it important to mention that you will consider uh, COP sixty five uh, score in, the, in deciding whether to admit the patient or not? Um. See, this is the thing about time, because I think with Curve 65, this this station, they've just asked you to discuss management with the patient. Uh, I think you might want to explain your reasons behind why, um, you know, why you think they need to be admitted. Yes. The main reason I said admitted, because he said the stage was 91%, and and that was like a red flag, because if you have like a low stage of oxygen, you will definitely admit and administer oxygen. That's the first role, ABCD. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what's his what is his score? So he's 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 not confused. Uh, his urea, we don't know. Uh, so let's do the CRB sixty five, the one they use in the GP practice. His respiratory rate was um, twenty six, and his blood one. pressure blood pressure was fine. So yeah. and, and the six and he's over sixty five. So is he scoring two? Two. Yeah. So he's probably for hospital admission, but mm. um, yeah, hot community treatment and uh, and also ICU would probably not not be suitable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say because I, I would just say to the patient personally, I would say, um, you know, because some of your your observations we've uh, we've done, like your your breathing rate uh, and your oxygen levels are a bit low. Um, for that reason, I think it's definitely worth um, you being admitted uh, in the hospital, staying in hospital under the care of the medical team so that they can monitor your condition and also allows us to give you um, antibiotics through a cannula um, um, and also um, give you oxygen, things like that. Mm. And fluids. Yeah. It's actually very important to first mention that you will have to have antibiotic through cannula and um, you know, have some other investigations, including uh, 
uh, urea and uh, creatinine and that patients we need to spend some you know we we need to be admitted to be able to get all of this uh, yeah done yeah the important thing is this exam is really superficial so we don't have time to go into de detail explaining about urea and explaining about there's no time so just just the fact that their their observations are you know there some of them are a bit low so so he would benefit from um from um uh, being mon his condition being monitored and from further investigation yeah yeah uh, i want to ask when he was uh, asking about uh, ICE, the patient's idea concern and all that patients express uh, fear about possibility of having uh, lung cancer so how could that have been addressed in his uh, management you know, could we, could we have mentioned something about that fear? Yeah, I think I think the investigation. So I think you can always say that at this stage, it's, um, it's difficult to say. Um, but let's collect we, more, more right. information, and then and then we'll be able to get to the bottom of um, what's causing this. But it does look like uh, you do have a chest infection. But we will we will do further investigations to to check what the cause is, um, make sure that, you know, there's not anything sinister there, something yeah. like that. Um, because yeah, it could be, it could be, uh, you know, an infection secondary to lung cancer. Hmm. Um, he is, he is 72, so, and he's a smoker. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other comments or anything that anyone wants, wants to add? I just, want to, I just want to ask, like, how to cut short my history? Because even the last time, like, I was exceeding the time. How to like, how to like, uh, manage my time? Because I've, I've seen like lately, like, uh, I'm taking lots of time in history taking. How can I uh, reduce this time? Mm. If it, even think, last time as well. Yeah. Uh, number one is practice. So that's you know mm -hmm. the ums and ahs and the hesitation that wastes you a lot of time. So number one is pra keep practicing. Uh, I think that will that will give you an extra minute or so. And number two, I would say for exploring the symptoms, too much time was spent on there. It needs to be very superficial. Yeah. yeah. So the the yeah. history of the presenting complaint. You know, if if, if, I was, if I tell you I've got chest pain, uh, but the, my main presenting complaint is you know a productive cough, but I've also say chest pain. Just literally just one or two questions like when did it start where is it uh does it get worse when you you know is there anything that makes it worse like breathing taking a deep breath in for example but just you know like it's just got to be superficial and you just have to make that sacrifice um and just focusing on things related to patient safety so uh, red flags towards the beginning when you're doing history presenting complaint and then towards the end safety netting Definitely, you know, always lean towards including those and dismissing other staff um, if you're short on time. Um, what else? Uh, and one, one more question I had to ask, like, uh, yeah. how do you differentiate between differentials and red flags? Because some symptoms of red flags do coincide with the differentials. Sorry, could you say that again? So, talking about the differentials. Uh, yes, how to differentiate between differentials and red flags? Because some symptoms of the red flags do coincide with the symptoms of differentials. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just kind of group them together, really. I mean, the, I mean, you, you're not going to say to them, to, to the patient, all right, I'm going to ask you some red flag questions now. So you're not going to ask them that. So in your, this is just for you. In your mind, you're thinking red. That's why in the checklist, we've grouped them together as red risk factors, red flag, and relevant systems review. So basically, in your mind, differential diagnosis, risk factors, red flags, and relevant systems review, that's all just kind of one section after you've explored the main presenting complaint. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So yes. in your mind, you've got three or four differentials, and then you're just asking questions. Uh, and then you're like, okay, any red flag questions? Okay, uh, weight loss, uh, night, night sweats, uh, fatigue, uh, any lumps and bumps around the body? Okay, that's my red flag, done. Uh, uh, any other differentials I was thinking about? I'll think about PE. Let me just ask about um, a painful, uh, a painful calf or a swollen calf. Uh, okay, I was thinking about 
um, COPD exacerbation. Let me ask about um, if this has happened before, if he's ever had problems with coughing before, um, you know, if, if, if it's a new thing. Or, and then later on, I will also ask about smoking when I get to the social history. I mustn't forget that. So you just kind of have to micromanage all that information in your brain. But I think, you know, like once you practice more, um, you will be, you will have more brain processing power to focus on that kind of analysis. And and you because you'll be spending much less time on what to say next, you know, on, on the structure. Um, so yeah, I think that's um, that's the main thing. It's just being flexible. You don't have to you know stick to a rigid structure. I don't know if that does that answer your question. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of like in my mind just group them all together into one. Well, yeah. I I don't know uh, the 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 pressures and red flag. Do they come up at the same you know point in the history? I used to think uh, the the differentials it could be in the history and the red flag would be after your um, in the past medical histories and the family and social history. I don't know uh, around where you talked about uh, leaflets and all that. I don't know if uh, if if that's if if that's okay or if I'm correct. Yeah, well, you know, say, you know, when you do your, um, uh, when you explode the symptoms, you explore the symptoms, so either for or split up or Socrates, whatever closed question system you're using to explore a symptom, towards the end, you know, like Fodpara, for example, the A at the end of Fodpara is associated symptoms. So that blends yeah. in nicely. Uh, yes. The same with, this is why I prefer squit ups to Socrates. Mm. Uh, I prefer squit ups because the S at the end stands for uh, secondary symptoms at the end so that they also blends in with the association so you symptoms. can bring in the red flags yeah yeah, yeah so you can bring that's... in the red flags you can bring in the because you're not going to tell them i'm thinking of pe have you had a pulmonary embolism have you had a, a swollen painful calf you're going to just ask them about the car so that's a symptom so that also fits in blends in nicely the differential diagnosis blends in nicely as well to the associated symptoms the red flags uh, blends in nicely to associated symptoms maybe i would just ask Anything that's not a symptom, say like it's a, a, a condition or a social habit like smoking, I, I would save those then for later. I wouldn't include them there, but you might want to. That's fine. You wouldn't necessarily be penalised for that, but I prefer to keep that a little bit of structure there and, and just restrict myself to asking about symptoms. Um, and, and the same for risk factors. So any symptoms um, that are risk factors, I would I would ask there. But if it's a medical condition, then I would ask it later on in past medical history. And then the same with relevant systems review, that's symptoms as well. So all the symptoms are asked there, and I like to separate that, just symptoms there, and then everything else, um, you know, the, 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 the PMAS TOSA later on. That's great. Yeah, I think it requires, everyone has their own unique style, and, and, and you will refine your own unique style with more and more practice. So say the, the checklist that I have, what I would say, a suggestion, is to take that, open it up in Microsoft Word, and just make changes every now and then. Um, make changes. You, like, oh, I don't. That I don't like that bit. That doesn't work for me. So let me switch those two around. Let me do this. Let me remove this because I don't need. I don't like asking that, and I don't think it's important. You know, it's so your own unique style, and then, um, and then hopefully you'll have your own kind of unique method for 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 that makes sense to you. That's the most important thing, I think rather than following someone else's method. So these are the, some of the notes. Um, so you remember when we talked about P for purpose. So I understand that, you know, you've been referred by your GP to the to an A&E department. Can you tell me a bit more about what's happened? So that's a nice kind of open question uh, that leads you on to the presenting complaint. Um, and if he, if he just tells you, you know, I've been having a cough, doctor, and you could just start another open question. Oh, could you tell me more about that cough? Okay. Yeah. And then let him say what he has to say. Get off what he, off his chest what he wants to get, what he wants to express. And then then start honing in on the on the closed questions. You know, um, you could do your fog paro and ask about the sputum and stuff. Um, it mentions here in the notes, if the patient is out of breath when you enter the room, review his observations earlier and ask the patient if he smokes or has COPD, then offer oxygen. So that's always one thing, you know, with breathless patients or pa patients in pain or in discomfort for whatever reason, always have that in the back of your mind. Like if it's of 
if it's reached a sufficient uh, severity that you might need to address that now before continuing in, in with the um, the history, and it might be worth asking the patient if it's okay to continue, if they're comfortable enough to continue. Um, so we mentioned all these um, these red flags, uh, sorry, these um, these uh, questions about the sputum. So clear or grey suggests uh, COPD. Uh, pink and frothy suggests um, left ventricular failure. Green or yellow suggests an infective process. So there could be pneumonia, could be TB, could be um, um, uh, pneumonia secondary to uh, uh, COPD, uh, like an exacerbation of, of COPD. Uh, anything else that causes yellow or green sputum? Could be bronchi uh, bronchiectasis is the other one. Uh, and then also, yeah, not forgetting to ask about blood um, as well. And that will also tell you about TB as well, as well as lung cancer and uh, pulmonary embolism, uh, which can sometimes present hemoptysis. Uh, so yeah, I think we've discussed all these differentials in a lot of depth. Um, just, yeah, just be aware of um, uh, atypical pneumonias um, and to ask about the risk factors for the different ones. Mesothelioma, I don't think, I, I wouldn't really think about mesothelioma in a case. So you don't have time to go through all these different differentials, just three or four maximum. I'd say lung cancer, heart failure. So number one is obviously pneumonia. Number two is COPD, TB. And then I would think of maybe lung cancer and heart failure. Is there anything else anyone would, would add to that? Mm, so we talked about pulmonary embolisms. Yeah, pulmonary embolism, yeah. What, I'm sorry, what about bronchiectasis? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, how much... Um, so did you ask me how much sputum I... Um, yeah, uh, the volume of sputum and colour. Yeah, so it was green, so that, that's in line with bronchiectasis. But I think uh, he asked me about the smell. So number one, it wasn't uh, uh, foul smelling, which goes against bronchiectasis. Also, there weren't, you know, there wasn't copious amounts of sputum. Bronchiectasis amount. might, might have previous uh, history of uh, cough that was uh, not completely yeah. treated. Yeah. yeah that, was, that wasn't in this case. Yeah, this was his first time having anything similar uh, to this mm -hmm. kind of presentation. So yeah, I think that's that's the reasons why we we didn't really think too much about bronchitis, but it should definitely be one of the differentials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we talked. Remember, remember what, what we always what I want to focus on with each of these stations is three or four key themes. They're the three key themes because what's going to fail you in a station? At the end of the day, you just need to pass a station. If you get full marks in a station, it doesn't increase your marks at all. You either pass the station or you fail the station. So you need to just focus on not being perfect and just fitting in the most important things within the time frame. Um, so the most important things here are the red flags, like weight loss, like smoking, when you ask about social history. Um, is he, are there any signs of dehydration or like any deterioration? Yeah, identifying, you know, if he needs to be hospitalized, which he does in this case. Um, making sure you stabilize the patient with oxygen and fluids. Um, yeah, I'd say they're the, you know, the, 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 the key themes that you need to address. And if you don't address, then it could be, you know, you might end up failing the patient. 